dearest chess friends and welcome to a new chess lesson online. This is International Master Camilla Chovanu and in this video I will show you how to attack with sacrifices. And we will see the game that Bobby Fischer played as white against Mikhail Tal at the Candidates Tournament in the year of 1959. And it is such a game full of sacrifices <laughs> you'll be amazed to see that fisher has almost sacrificed his entire army so let's see it uh, they play the sicilian okay and tal is uh, blocking uh, the bishop from uh, reaching on f7 okay by pushing the pawn g6 taking control of d5 b5 and finally, black goes after the pawn on e4, and apparently white does not care about it, but he sacrifices the central pawn, so Tal just goes and takes it. Okay, and this gives white opportunity to open the position quickly. Okay, so what is white going to do? Uh, simply, white would like to attack the pawn on e6 by pushing f5, okay and trying to open the king because the king was left in the center okay so black is trying to stop the f pawn from advancing but white advances nevertheless and so this gives white opportunity again to not only sacrifice the pawn but to sacrifice even the knight okay so knight takes on f5 obviously black cannot take back because if he takes if he does then queen to d5 would follow with a threat of a checkmate on f7 and threatening the rook and if the rook goes to a7 to defend the pawn right now the queen goes to d4 attacking uh, both rooks in the same time and black is going to lose one of them plus can you see that black's pieces are undeveloped and limited on the last rank Okay, so absolutely it's not a good idea to take the knight. Okay. Now he brings the rook to g8, pointing toward white's king. But even so, I don't think black could take on f5 because bishop takes f7 check would follow and then queen to d5 check and take the rook. Okay, so what do you think white played? He thought it was a good idea to attack both the rook and the knight on e4 while placing his own two pieces in a fork, okay, in a double attack. So he did it intentionally <laughs> and it looks so nice, right? Okay, so black decides to trade knights. He's got to, to simplify the position a little bit. So he brings the rook up and now the knights get trade. And bishop takes f5. Okay, it's very important to cover the king. And can you see that uh, in this moment, uh, they have the same amount of pieces. So the position is equal from a material point of view, but black is still very passive with his pieces. It's not that white's pieces are extremely well placed, uh, but black's king is still in the center. Therefore, black is trying to keep it safe. Okay, so white trades one bishop and attacks the pawn on d6. Okay, black is threatening the checkmate on g2 with the queen and also the knight on a4 contemporaneously. So the queen gets up and uh, black takes the knight. The bishop takes on d6 attacking the rook and the knight on b8. And so black um, proposes a queen's trade. So white decides to keep the queen and to make a trade of uh, minor pieces by taking the knight on b8 now there's the check and take the bishop back great so what's the situation black is one bishop for one pawn and um, white will still try to attack the king in the center because there's still something to be sacrificed it didn't just stop Okay, so after bishop to e7 to cover the king, now rook takes f7 comes. Okay, there's still material to be sacrificed. Actually, this is a trade, a rook's trade, and uh, white taking a pawn. Good. So now black will try to trade the queens, 
And now he just defends the 6th rank very well. And uh, black wants to keep a pawn on the queen side. It's very important because if white manages to trade these two pawns and then trade the other pieces, it's going to be a draw because black cannot promote the pawn on the side because uh, he's got the dark squared bishop and the promotion square is a light square. Okay, so black should trade uh, some pieces, the major pieces, but not the pawn on b4, very importantly. Okay, so now finally the queens get exchanged, the pawn is being kept, and then the king goes in the center. White's pawns are on dark squares. Okay, and this is uh, to black's advantage because he's got the dark squared bishop. Black is trying to advance a little bit. And finally, white wants to trade the pawn, right? But of course, black shouldn't allow that. So he pushes the pawn and his two steps from promotion once the pawn on b2 gets taken. And finally, it's going to happen. Black will soon win. Okay, bishop a1, a4, pawn to b2. So it's time for black to sacrifice a rook this time, okay? So we are at move number 52 and white resigns. Of course, if white takes the rook, then it's a discovered check with promotion to queen and black wins the game. Wow, this has been such an explosive <laughs> playing style uh, from white side, but we saw that black was very able to defend the position and to make the most of his pieces even in um, an unpleasant uh, position because uh, his pieces were undeveloped and certainly this was not on Tal's style but what to do we should know how to attack and we should know how to defend as well thank you so much for your attention dear friends and i will talk to you in our next lesson all the best to you